All right, it looks like our sulfur chloride has survived the night. Still got that chlorine standing over it. And the drying tube looks like it's done its job. Quite wet on the end here. It doesn't look like there's any droplets of water down in this part of the tube. So it doesn't look like too much water is going into here. A bit of the sulfur chloride smell in this box. It's pretty bad. But we'll get this out and we're ready for it today. To, uh, yeah, react it with some ammonia. We need to put a solvent in this. The only solvent I really have that will work here is dichloromethane, which is a little less than ideal for a couple of reasons. In the synthesis that we're following, they use carbon tetrachloride. Now, carbon tetrachloride is great for this kind of thing, but it's also virtually impossible for me to get. I am trying, actually, but that's a different note. But it's good because it's a chlorinated solvent, but it has quite a high-ish boiling point carbon tetrachloride, whereas dichloromethane has a boiling point of like 40 odd boiling point of 39.6. Why I even put it on the container? Look at this labeling. Hell yeah. 2016, yeah, go 2016 me. But yeah, the, the high vapor pressure and low boiling point is not going to be great for this because we're going to be pushing a lot of air and a lot of ammonia through the solution. And so we're going to be losing a lot of solvent vapor. So we've got to try really hard to keep all the solvent vapor in there with a condenser and, you know, really cold water and all that sort of stuff because we don't want to just evaporate all our solvent off. That'll be really bad. It's also less than ideal because I don't have heaps of it. How much do I have? It's hard to say. What I should have done in advance is make about 350 mils of chloroform. That would have been a good compromise, have enough spare to like keep topping up, but didn't do it, so we're stuck with this. Also, we have to hope that this dichloromethane is dry enough. It is over some sieves, but it is quite old. If it is has a lot of water in it, then it's going to destroy all our hard-made sulfur chloride, so I'm hoping it's dry enough. This came from a uh, paint stripper. They're really green, goopy stuff. And still, and you get quite nice dichloromethane out of it. Expensive, but it does work. Condenser's on. I definitely should have cooled this, adding the dichloromethane. I, I, I think it looks like it's reflexing the flask a little. At least I got the condenser water cold. This is actually where I think the synthesis fell down last time I did this a couple of years ago because the dichloromethane just wasn't dry enough and it all reacted away and the ammonia wasn't dry enough and that sort of thing. So I think we're okay now. Looks good. It does look good. All right, what we have to do now is pump some more chlorine through this sulfur chloride because we want to convert everything to SCl2, so one sulfur to two chlorine. And we know that we have a mixture of the one to one ratio of S2Cl2 and the two to one SCl2. And for maximum yields of the S4N4, we really want everything to be SCl2. We just want a little bit of chlorine um, now. Got a whole lot of ice in here, so this is all looking real cold. That's good. Got the same sulfuric acid trap here. I've just got some hydrochloric acid in the flask. We'll just be adding some TCCA chunks to it to get some chlorine because we shouldn't need a whole heap of chlorine. I also got temperature measurement here because that's important. What we want to see is we want to see some chlorine like above the flask. We want to see that the chlorine is going in here and then going through the liquid not being absorbed. So like a standing atmosphere of, uh, of chlorine above the solution. All right, I put a metric boatload of chlorine into this bloody solution and it still doesn't look like we have a standing atmosphere of chlorine above the flask, but um, I have to move on to the next part if I have any hope of getting this done today. It went on for about an hour longer than I thought it was gonna go on. Has improved it. I mean, it, it will work with the, the sulfur monochloride, but it just won't be as good and there'll be more sulfur byproducts. So I'm, I'm gonna change all this now to the ammonia gas setup. All right, I think we're finally bloody ready to do this stuff. Yes, complicated, bit unorthodox setup. Once again, you know what's new. Got our ammonium sulfate in there, uh, concentrated sodium hydroxide solution. Heat that up, come through, got a bigger alcohol and we're using it. Basically as an air condenser here, just because we've got a cold trap here, we've got a whole lot of ice and a flask down there. Klystan adapter, hell yeah, Klystan adapters always. Um, another bigger alcohol, except this one is filled with molecular sieves and sodium carbonate. I was just going to fill it with anhydrous sodium carbonate, but that clogged the airflow completely, so it ended up being more sieves than carbonate to uh, get the airflow um, to actually be able to move through the column. I mean, ideally I'd use calcium chloride here, but I think calcium chloride can't be used to dry ammonia because the ammonia can react with the calcium chloride. So that's why I'm using anhydrous sodium carbonate. Comes through, comes out the top of this, I'm gonna fix it so it stays like this a bit more, but yeah, comes through this long bit of tubing and then into the flask there. You'll notice there's no suck back trap because what I'm relying on, and this is a little risky, but I'm also kind of nearly out of glassware, is my pump here. So we'll turn this to low. 
And then we, we plug this in. The important thing is I don't blow any joints out because if I blow these joints, I could smash all my glassware. But there, you see, like that. So this is pumping air into there. See, which joint blew there? See, joints are blowing. We'll have to see. Maybe this is maybe this is enough having a joint, you know, kind of a little bit off. There's no ammonia generated right now. It's just air. The air is getting dried by everything vaguely. So I've achieved a much nicer flow rate. Look at that. That's on low, and then I, I could turn it up to high, and it's just a little bit better. This is, of course, without any ammonia. And I achieved this flow rate by cutting a hole in the tube here. So 50% of the air pressure leaks out here at the start. <laughs> and we've got a one-way valve here anyway, but so that is a much better flow rate, and we're not going to blow any joints with that thing. So let's finally, we're actually recording. Yep, cool. Let's add in a drop. Now's the scary part. Is the reaction actually going to work? <laughs> we've got this end tube. We've got a piece of pH paper that's been wet slightly. We put our end tube over the end of it. Look at that, beautiful. So there's ammonia coming out of the tube. I just disconnected it while we're purging the system because we don't want to put too much air through it. Hopefully it's dry. <laughs> I'm a little stressed, a lot's going on. Yep, all right, so I'll hook this up to the flask straight away and let's do it. Expected to see a big smoke of ammonium chloride. That's exactly what we're getting. You can see those, look at those beautiful. Look at it happening. It's beautiful. Now we uh, now we wait and I hope it works and just keep this happening. Yeah, there's stuff coming out the top and yeah, this is very stressful. But if we're hydrolyzing the um, sulfur chlorides, we'll get a whole lot of um, HCl and that might also be what we're seeing missed out the top. But it, it's hard to, hard to say at this stage. All I can do is hope it's actually working. It might seem intuitive to cool the system if we don't want um, solvent loss but we can't actually so the synthesis that we're following says that we'll get all these um, side products if we if we cool it we're letting it go somewhere between 20 and 50 degrees on the thing but so we're going from 20 to the boiling point of dichloromethane which is 30 uh, 39 so so we could even get a reflux going um, and that's still within our temperature window but stressful all right, I don't know how to stop this, but there's ammonia chloride everywhere. Things don't smell too good. I mean, this is always going to be a bit of a, oh, a stressful operation, but... Ah, oh, fuck me. Ah, oh, fuck me. Do not suck back. All right, everything's now pink. I don't know if this is a good or a bad development, but it's certainly a development. It's temperature at it's still below 30. We did we have risen f a couple degrees, but not a heaps, not heaps. So all right, now that the smoke is really pink now, it's even coming out of the top pink. But uh, I have no idea what's happening in the flask. I mean, also it's worth pointing out that the temperature has spiked. We can focus on that. It's now 35, so we're getting close to the uh, boiling point of the dichloromethane. I don't know why that's happened. Once again, I actually cannot see what's going on in the flask. There's a lot of solid in the flask too. One thing I might do is I might add some more solvent. I do still have some spare dichloromethane, probably another 100 mils, maybe oh, maybe 50 mils. But uh, I'm going to pour in some dichloromethane from the, through the top here, just because it doesn't look like it's stirring very well. It's very sludgy, and that's probably explaining the temperature spike. Something of concern. It looks like we've uh, developed a blockage here. So um, when I uh, take off this thing slightly, <laughs> it pisses out this purple um, something or other. But I don't know whether to keep this in, but then we build up pressure. Kind of strange, but yeah, um, this is not good because that's all our solvent vapor. And it's, it's mainly ammonium chloride, but... All right, uh, desperate attempt, I tried to put a Graham condenser on here, but you can see <laughs> this has just happened. Yeah, you see there's all these solids. I believe it's ammonium chloride, but it's like basically snowing it, which is never a good... Uh, thing. Oh man, that's crazy. Alright, we can see it. If I put in uh, a whole lot of sodium hydroxide solution and generate a whole lot of ammonia, we can actually watch it go through the system up here. And then that. Uh... I have never seen anything like this. I'm going to collect the solid from here. 
God, imagine if this is our product and it, we were just like forming it here and then pushing it all the way up to be collected here. That would be amazing, but it's not our product, I'm, I'm sure of it, but um, you know, there's nothing I can do. Here's our first batch. Um, <laughs> this is stuff just, I just inverted the condenser and got it out of there. Look at it, it's just dry red powder. Yeah, shit. When will it stop? <laughs> I assume my endpoint has to be once the smoke stops because if there's still ammonium chloride being generated, there still has to be chloride there and we don't want any chloride. So the smoke has to stop and that's our endpoint. All right, update. I think the uh, color of our smoke has just changed color. It used to be pink, right? Obviously it's been pink for a while, but now if I just take this off and we get exposed to a lot of smoke for just one, a couple of seconds, Look, that's now yellow. So we might have actually just hit the transition we've been waiting for. That's mentioned in our notes about going from a some other colors, <laughs> that I can't remember, to a, uh, a yellow. All right, it's getting very late and very dark, so I'm having to go to a backup option. Because what I think is happening is this whole flask, and the lighting is terrible now, but the whole flask is sludged up because there's so much ammonium chloride which doesn't dissolve. And so it's not stirring, so even though we're getting ammonium chloride getting pushed out, it's not, it's not converting all of the stuff at the bottom because it's just not stirring very well. But I'm out of dichloromethane, I'm just out of solvent. Ideally, I'd just be able to keep adding dry dichloromethane and that would be all great but I, I, I just don't have any more so I have to go to a backup solvent so this here is toluene I just don't know how dry it is I, I haven't dried it it's just straight as I as I bought it and I don't know well I mean it's over some sieves it's only been over sieves for the last hour or so and I don't even know if it's can work in this synthesis it's probably okay but um yeah I, I don't really have any other option because it's just not going to work when it's all sludged up like that. I, I just need more solvent. And I think that's why I'm getting so much ammonium chloride out the top here, because I just don't have very much solvent. All right, so toluene it is. I'm gonna put it in through this second condenser. Wish me luck, hopefully everything doesn't react away and we only end up with nothing because I'm trying this, but. All right, no, even with heaps of solvent, it's still snowing out heaps of that solid ammonium chloride, so it's still yellow. All right, progress, I think. There's a lot less ammonium chloride coming off the flask, even though we're creating quite a bit of ammonia right now. I just checked it, and we were still on the acidic side with that pH test, so we'll just run this for a little bit longer and um, see what we get. We're hopefully nearing nearly an end point at this point, because I'm keen to sit down and go inside for a little bit. So here's our two different colors of smoke. This used to be a lot more pink and it's fading over time. It looks like it's going towards this one. It used to be like fairy floss pink, but now it's going quite brown. But you can see there was a distinct shift. All the smokes stopped being pink and started being this yellowy brown color. So there's obviously there's some sulfur chemistry that's getting caught up in the ammonia chloride. Small amounts, I hope. <laughs> so if we go take a little bit of wet pH paper and put it over the outlet now, look at that. Very basic. So now we're actually getting ammonia go all through the solution, bubble out and then through here. So I'm gonna let it go for a little bit longer, but then I'll, I'll recheck the pH. So we might actually be close to getting done. All right, here's the extract. I got, uh, you know, about a mil out um, from in here. I mix it around with water. It doesn't quite mix too well because it's toluene, but we get a drop of this out now, the water. We put it on our pH paper. It's no longer acidic. It's actually basic. We've actually finally done it. Finally reached the end point. The color's wrong is a bad sign really actually, but um, so what's next now is we take everything out and filter it.
Now that's filtering. All I have to do is clean up. Ha ha ha. Oh. Oh no.